everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Tuesday Tech Talks. And this week we're going to be talking about the use of full range drivers in line source applications. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me about this. Uh, we offer some uh, three inch full range drivers that were really popular. And I'd have people contact us and say, hey, um, I'd like to do a big line source with these things. Um, I can just series parallel a whole group of them together and not have to use any crossover thinking that they're just going to get higher sensitivity and, and uh, additional output and it's going to look just like the frequency response of a single driver. It doesn't work that way. Um, again we go back to the episodes that we've had previously on comb filtering. Um, the comb filtering effects knock the top end right out of these things uh, when you when you run them that way uh, there's no getting around it there's no free lunch um, and today I'm going to show you exactly uh, what happens when you do that and I know there's been companies out there that have offered some commercial speakers that are a continuous line of full range drivers I've seen them I've heard them uh, I've scratched my head thinking maybe they've EQ'd the bottom end out of it to try and flatten out the response no, no, it, it sounded bad. And there's a company out there that typically just sells parts only. And they offer a loudspeaker kit that allows you to run a whole line of full range drivers uh, in a very cylindrical cabinet uh, that even has a little curve to the top uh, as if it's going to project sound in this continuous wave up and throughout your room because of this curved shape that it has. No, it doesn't work that way. There's still so much comb filtering going on uh, from one end of the ray to the other that you have no top end. And we're going to look over at the measurements and take a look at that. And in future episodes, we'll try to get a great big monitor up here so we can just go through these together. Uh, for now, I'm going to have Ron just drop in some uh, JPEG images of the captures of the screenshots or of the measurements in the corner of the screen. Hopefully you guys can see them well and make some sense of it. Uh, the first measurement we're going to look at um, is uh, these drivers individually. And these are the LGK drivers. They're in their individual enclosures. This, these are two pair here that I've stacked on their sides. Uh, this pair uh, matched really well. Uh, this pair also, again, nice frequency response. Very closely matched pair. Um, and I start with just a measurement of one uh, by itself and then I add that same speaker, the response, with the other stacked on top of it. The reason I do that is the added surface reflection that we've got here lifts the bottom up a, a little bit and gives you a little added output uh, versus it just being in its little enclosure all by itself. So we're going to look at that stuff and I'm going to turn the camera over to the screen and uh, we'll have a look at it. Okay folks, hopefully you can see everything here okay. Um, this first measurement that we're looking at is individual measurements of all the speakers. They overlay on top of each other really well. Uh, very consistent response from one end to the other. Um, the second measurement we're going to look at um, is just this lower driver uh, with all of these drivers stacked on top of it. The difference is seen here in this measurement. The red line is just that that speaker by itself and the green line is still that speaker by itself but with all of these stacked on top of each other so that's going to be kind of our base and we're going to take a look at the measurements and see what happens uh, this is the base this is the green line we see again just one playing by itself for the first measurement what I've done is I have series all of the drivers now when you series the drivers they're all sharing the load so each driver is just receiving, in this case, just a fourth of the load, and the output is the same as if it were a single driver. And that is going to be the red line that you see here, and I'm going to have to bring it up so we can see it. Um, as you can see, it's no longer a smooth, flat line. This uh, red line shows that the response has dropped off considerably all across the top end. Uh, starting at about eight or nine hundred hertz it just starts taking a dive 
there's some choppiness up top where things are arriving back in phase again but the whole top end is pretty much gone this is all an effect of comb filtering and if I were to move the microphone up and down you would see this whole top end start moving around you would see peaks like this where some of it is in phase at a certain frequency you'd see even deeper holes where some of the output is out of phase at some frequencies uh, there's no fixing it as you can see the output is for the most part less than if you were just using a single driver um, next I'm going to show you what happens when we uh, series this group and we series this group but we we parallel those two groups so we've got two groups of two uh, the impedance gets right back to eight ohms again so an easy load for the amplifier and anytime you parallel uh, a group you get additional output and as you can see here on the purple line we've gained uh, from the green line we've gained a total of 6 dB of output down low because down low everything is coupling uh, we're getting additional output but you can see the same dive that we got whenever they were all in series with each other it's the almost the exact same frequency response it's just higher in elevation so the response is still it's still a mess it's still all over the place and uh, lastly I'm gonna move this down a little bit so we can see it uh, I'm gonna show you this light blue line the light blue line is all four of these drivers in parallel you'll see we we gained output across the board again uh, but still the same thing is going on we still got the same cancellation pattern we still got the reduced output uh, all the way down into the lower re uh, all the way up into the upper regions and again if I were to move the microphone up and down we would see this whole top end dancing around as comb filtering is occurring at different frequencies uh, based on the wavelengths again it's the same same thing we've covered in the other uh, videos we've got output from two separate sources and your ear or the microphone is a different distance between the sources so one is a time delay versus the other. You can't get around it. When you put full range drivers in a line source, your ear is going to be closer to some drivers than it is to others. And those that are arriving later uh, in time are going to cancel the output of the other drivers. That's why uh, you hear when people build those kits that are offered that way, they're just a line of full range drivers. They've got no top end. The top end just seems like it's been knocked out and it has that's what's happened from the comb filtering effects um, if you have any questions on this stuff how this works uh, drop it again in the comments section and we'll try to have another topic for you again next week thanks for tuning in appreciate it